If you have chronic kidney disease, then you've heard of a measurement called GFR. But did you know GFR is not a measurement of kidney damage? Then what the heck does GFR measure? Well, I'm going to talk about that and more coming right up. Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here with Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is video number 60 in my journey fighting kidney disease, kicking it to the curb, starting out at stage five, kidney failure, and today stage three, feeling great and still improving. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about your GFR and help you understand it. Also go over some tips to help improve your GFR and what to avoid that might decrease your GFR. Now, if you have not done so already, please take a moment and click that little subscribe button and hit the little bell icon right next to it. That way you'll get a notification every time I upload a brand new video. And at any time during this video, if you think, hey, kicking kidney disease as a curb is a great idea, give this video a thumbs up. Now, let's jump into understanding your GFR. GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate, and it measures how well your kidneys are functioning. And what's that function they're doing? It's filtering. We look at how much blood plasma has to pass through your kidneys in a certain amount of time to filter out a certain amount of a substance. And it's given in milliliters per minute, typically, though in other countries, it may be a different measurement. Now that substance that we're typically looking at is creatinine, but there could be other ones. But for this video, we're gonna assume creatinine. Now, as I said, GFR measures how well your kidneys are filtering, not the amount of damage. Now, if your kidneys are damaged, your nephrons, those little filters in there, or your blood vessels, they're scarring, you have low blood flow, that will result in lower filtering capabilities. Your kidney function will be reduced. Now, doctors can't measure your GFR directly, so they use one of several different formulas to get an estimated GFR, also known as an eGFR. They'll look at your race, your age, your gender, how much creatinine's in your blood, and other factors to come up with your estimation. They can also do a creatinine clearance test where they collect your urine for 24 hours. Now, because there are multiple different formulas available, it is possible and highly likely that you will get different results based on different formulas, but they're all gonna pretty much be in the same ballpark. Now, an eGFR may not be right for everyone. It may not be accurate if you're under 18, pregnant, very muscular, or obese. Now your GFR will decline naturally with age, even for people without kidney damage. And the GFR scale goes from zero up to 120. So let's take a look at some common averages for different age groups. For people in their 20s, a GFR of 116 is average. For people in their 30s, a GFR of 107. For people in their 40s, a GFR of 99. For people in their 50s, a GFR of 93. For people in their 60s, a GFR of 85. And for people over 70, a GFR of 75. If your GFR is lower than normal, your doctor will do additional tests, such as a urinalysis, looking for abnormal leakage of protein, sugar, white blood cells, and red blood cells in your urine. There are five stages of kidney disease and they are determined based on your GFR. Let's take a look at what they are and the GFR ranges for them. Stage one is a GFR over 90 with signs of kidney damage. Stage two is a GFR of 60 to 89. Stage three is a GFR of 30 to 59. Stage four is a GFR of 15 to 29. And stage five, also known as kidney failure, is a GFR below 15. Since the GFR scale goes from zero to 120, it is not a direct conversion to the percentage of kidney function remaining. This is one of the most common mistakes I see in message forums and on social media. 
If you have a GFR of 60, you have 50% of the kidney function of a young adult. And remember, kidney function will naturally decline with age. While with current medical science, it is not possible to repair kidney damage, it is possible in many cases to improve your GFR. Why? Because GFR measures how well your kidney is functioning, not the amount of damage. Since kidney damage is always present, it is possible to improve your kidney function with diet and lifestyle changes, but then lose some of that reclaimed function through bad diet and lifestyle choices. For example, during a period of heavy travel for my job, I loosened my diet and allowed a lot of things in that I normally would not eat and my GFR declined. But then I got back on the right diet and I regained that GFR and I've continued to improve. Our goal as kidney patients is to remove inflammation and reduce the amount of stress and the workload we place on our kidneys so that they can focus on removing toxins and waste products from our blood. We can manage our diet to find that Goldilocks zone where we give our body all the right nutrients that it needs, not too little, not too much, and our kidneys can function the best they can for as long as possible. And here's a bonus bit of information. For most people, the right diet and lifestyle changes can minimize or even eliminate the symptoms of kidney disease with a GFR as low as 20. Now let's take a look at some of the things that you need to keep an eye out for that can increase creatinine in your blood and lower your GFR. These include some prescription medications, kidney infections, urinary tract obstructions, abnormal muscle breakdown, eating large amounts of meat, and extreme exercise. All of these can temporarily increase the amount of creatinine in your blood, temporarily lowering your GFR. Now let's take a quick look at tips to help improve your GFR. These include eating a low inflammation, kidney friendly diet, staying properly hydrated, getting regular exercise, avoiding supplements with creatine, taking a probiotic like Renadyl, and avoiding the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. Also, managing the underlying cause of your kidney damage to prevent further damage, such as managing your blood sugar and your blood pressure. And always take all prescription medications as prescribed. And these are all areas where your doctor or a dietitian can really help. And they may also recommend that you take a renal multivitamin like ProRenal Plus D. Last, don't focus so much on your GFR. While it is an important number, it is only one of many numbers that show you how well you're doing. Both you and your healthcare team need to focus on you as an entire person. How are you feeling? What symptoms are you having? How do your other labs look? You can't tell a person exactly what to do with a GFR of 57 compared to 49, 42, 36, 31, 29. But if you told your doctor, hey, look at my labs, my sodium is too low, my calcium is too high, they can tell you what to do. So please don't get too focused on just that GFR number. It is important, but it is not the most important thing. That is how you feel and how well you're doing at minimizing and preventing symptoms. And there you go. Now you know more about GFR. It's not a number that measures how much damage your kidneys have. It's just an estimation on how well your kidneys are functioning. Keep learning. The more you know, the better you can be at pushing your doctors and giving you the best treatment strategy. Because remember, you are your best advocate for great health. 
All right, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.